Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight at the Millennium Stage. Now please welcome, performing We Speak Your Name, under the direction of Goldie Patrick, ladies and gentlemen, Fresh Ink. Good evening. It's truly an honor to stand here and introduce the performance that you're about to see. I am proud to be the mama, Mama Goldie, of a group of thriving, emerging writers, performers, singers, dancers, most importantly, activists. This performance is our tribute. It's a tribute to the number of black women that have been murdered by the police, and for some strange reason, we forget them. We don't speak their name. Their stories don't get told. They all don't get a hashtag. So as we search to find our own stories, to find our own truths, we realize that we could lift up the names of the women who didn't have that opportunity. And as we researched more, we found out that there were women throughout history who had done that in their own crafts. So we decided to put the two together, to lift up the women who had been forgotten and to celebrate the women who have a legacy of speaking the names of women, their stories, their beauty, and their strength. In that, we found that we're all soldiers ready to fight for what we believe in and who we are. And so we agree that we will today and forevermore speak their name. Who will speak for the sisters who have been silenced by fear, by pain, or worse, by death? When you say their names, you give them new life. You vow to never forget them. Who will say her name when the rest of the world is too scared to? No, no one, one can speak tell our truth like we can, so we speak their names. Rakia Boy was 22 when she was shot and killed in the back of the head by an off-duty police officer. Dante Seren said he thought someone pulled out a gun, which really happened to be a cell phone. He said that he had reasonable fear that his life was in danger, and all charges were dropped. Say her name. Miriam Curry was coming from Connecticut to Washington, D.C. She made a U-turn by one of the security booths by the White House. Officers opened fire on Curry while her one-year-old daughter was in the car. Mer Curry was shot and killed, and charges were not filed against the officers. Say her name. Kimberly Randall King was killed on September 19th. She was found in a holding cell hanging by a t-shirt. She was then rushed to the hospital, but her family and friends feel like there was nothing to be done to save her life. Say, Say her name. name. Kendra Chapman. 18. She was arrested for the accusations of her stealing a cell phone. She was booked in jail around 6.30 p.m. and was found dead in her cell, hanging from a bed sheet around 7.50. The authorities blamed Chapman's death on suicide. Say, Say her name. name. Tanisha Anderson, age 37, suffered from bipolar disorder. Her family called the authorities for help. Instead, they slammed her to the ground in prone position, which caused her not to breathe. She was forced to the hospital. The coroner announced her death as a homicide. Say, Say her name. name. Shelly Frey was shot and killed by an off-duty security guard officer who suspected she was shoplifting. Followed to her car after denying the suspicions, the off-duty security guard officer put a bullet in her neck, taking the life of a mother of two children at the age of 27. Say, Say her name. name. Sandra Blaine was an African-American woman who was hung in her jail cell on July 13, 2015. Her death was classified as a suicide by the police in the county's coroner. She was 28 years old when she died. She was pulled over for a minor traffic violation and then arrested for allegedly assaulting the police. No charges were filed. Say, Say her name. name. We speak her name, never in vain. We speak her name, never in vain. We speak her name, never in vain. We speak 
reincarnate, never in vain. Black girls as young as five years old are being handcuffed and arrested. <clears throat> Black girls are six times more likely to be suspended from school than white girls. <clears throat> girls are the fastest growing criminal justice system population. In some counties, black 70% of girls in the system are black. African Americans constitute 14% of the general population nationally. Research reveals that the girls who are sent to the juvenile justice system experience a high rate of sexual violence. And it's not just about fighting. It's about knowing who we are and respecting who we are as black women. Speaking our names, our truths, our stories, even if no one else will. I don't know what you've been told. I don't know what you've been told. But black girls got that heart and soul. But black girls got that heart and soul. I don't know what you believe. I don't know what you believe. But black girl magic changes things. But black girl magic changes things. Sound off. One, two. Sound off. Three, four. Break it on down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Marginalization. To be pushed aside. All the way to the side. <clears throat> it's a state of emergency for black girls. We are at war. For years, black women have been marginalized, oppressed, and degraded, and still stood strong. Stereotypes that suggested we weren't good enough, images that sexually objectified us, belittled us, and convinced us we weren't worthy. It's a state of emergency for black girls. We are at war. You may be deciding, you may be wondering, why did we decide to fight? Because we are ready and tired and ready to take action. Enough of being the target, being seen as weak and less than equal. Our voices are meant to be heard. Your song, your dance, all weapons, we will no longer be silent. Black girl magic changes things. Magic and this ain't nothing new. For years, it, it, it's been happening for years now. It's probably happened to your mother, your, your grandmother, your great granny, and even before that, for generations of black women. And it's not gonna be easy, but it's necessary. Remember, every expert was once a beginner. Do you know yourself, love yourself, your strengths and your weaknesses? Some people are scared to know themselves that deeply, but it's necessary. Remember, you are your sister's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. I don't know what you've been told. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things we learn is about the joy and the value of sisterhood. We learn that the battle starts when you're willing to first and foremost look inside. Think about what it is, not that you've been battling outside, but what you've truly been battling on the inside. So our first work here in the Grio Girls at Fresh begins with self-actualization and self-awareness. And one of the greatest tools to do that is through poetry. 18-year-old poet Michelle Carter will share with you the first battle she learned to fight, to conquer, and to win in the victory. corrupted by evil voices and beastly actions. This is what happens when you're always told what you're lacking. So accustomed to acknowledging when I'm wrong cause right don't live here and never will. But that's just the voices talking again. Like when I tell myself, I wish I had paler skin, a smaller waist and bigger hips. Oh, and long straight hair that flows all the way to my back. Be smarter. Be attractive, energetic, athletic, not pathetic. No, wait, you are pathetic. Why are you so dark? Why are you so big? You see, I don't need your sideways glances, your silent laughter, and your pointing fingers, because I clown myself enough for the both of us. Yeah. And dispelling my demons is a heck of a job to do on the empty stomach. 
And I'm so dark because the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice, the dark yeah. of the flesh, the deep of the roots. I found beauty in my imperfections. Being black is not a burden, but a blessing. I am beautiful, strong, gifted, courageous. I am black, and I am proud. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Sis, can I talk to you? I don't think I can do this. I'm not strong enough. What do you mean? I'm a girl. What's that supposed to mean? I do girly stuff. What's, What's that, that supposed to mean? mean? Stuff girls do. Like take care of the house. Like teach and be brilliant. Like, like hold, run businesses. Like hold up families. Like farm, build, design communities. Like anything that they want to do. Like be a goddess, be a queen, be a lady. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, ladies first, ladies first. 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 The ladies will kick it, the rhyme that is wicked. Those that don't know how to be pros get evicted. A woman can beg you, break you, take you. Now it's time to rhyme. Can you relate to a sister dope enough to make you holler and scream? Hey, yo, let me take it from here, queen. Excuse me, but I think I'm about to do. To get into precisely what I am about to do, I'm conversating to the folks that have no whatsoever clue. So listen very carefully as I break it down for you. Merry, 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 merry. Happy, happy, overjoyed. Please with all the beats around my sister have employed. Slick and smooth throwing down the sound totally a yes. Let me take the position. Ladies first, yes? Yes. Ooh, ladies first, ladies first. Ladies first. Ooh, ladies first, ladies first. Ooh, ladies first, ladies first. Ooh, ladies first, ladies first. Yeah. Funny. Yes. <laughs> now, I bet you weren't expecting that. I really wasn't. See, that is Ladies First, an iconic song that at the time just felt real good and real popular, a voice of women in hip hop. But what we would soon discover was Ladies First became an anthem, an anthem for justice, an anthem for equality, an anthem for sisterhood. The Griot girls have had an opportunity not just to learn the lyrics, but to learn the meaning and the practice of what does it mean to be a ladies first kind of sister. So that's what we do. We listen to the music, but we also study the impact of the icons. Icons that reach across the span, across the continent, and across generations. Everyone from one of my favorite MCs, Queen Latifah, but then we also got other MCs that we learn from. In fact, the girls have been studying MC Light most recently. Anybody ever heard of MC Light? Word. So I wonder if I bring the girls back on stage, if they could have this conversation about what does it mean to still find your voice. I wonder if they could use MC Light as an example. There's only one way to really find out. Let me see. Uh, ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. So, Heaven, you were talking about being a girl and being girly. Mm -hmm. And then you just heard ladies first. Did that help at all? Yes. Do you still have any questions? A little. Okay. Well, let's talk about it. <laughs> Sit down and let me school you. When you're talking about a goddess, okay. a businesswoman, a voice that demands respect, you're talking about MC Light. When she first started, everybody kept saying that rap, rap was a, ramp, a man's game, but she fooled them all wrong. Integrity, she got that. And that's what I'm trying to tell you, that being a girl doesn't mean you're powerless, it means you're powerful. But all the things and all the ways folks try to bring me down, how do I let them know I'm serious? Hmm. hmm. For example, MC Light was born Lana Michelle Moore, October 11th, 1970. She started rapping when she was 17. Oh yeah, she was the first female solo artist to put out a rock album. Mm-hmm. She was also the first female solo artist to be nominated for a Grammy. What? A, a Grammy. Grammy. She is a, a DJ, an author, an actress. She Philanthropist. Was, she was the founder of the Hip Hop Sister Network. Yeah. I think I heard of that. Mm -hmm. And some of her songs include 
Tempa said this. Cappuccino. Roughneck. She featured on Self Destruction. <laughs> and Cha Cha Cha. I think mm. I heard of that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but my is rock. Must I say it again? I said it before. Move out the way when I'm coming through the door. So. Me, mm. heavy, mm. as light as a rock. Yeah. Guys, watch, mm. even some of the girls clock. Ooh. Step back, it ain't that type of party. Mm. No reply if you ain't somebody. Mm. Get out my face, don't wanna hear no more. Okay. If you hate rejection, don't try to score. Okay. First base, you ain't got what it takes. You smile, you wink, you big fake flake. You mm -hmm. beg, you borrow, and now you gotta learn. Oh, oh. 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 Anybody else know song? No one. You know how I decided to speak her name? Why? To change the story out here. I'm tired of folks always talking about pregnancy or rumors of who they've been with or being told that they're a threat because they talk too loud. I'm a warrior. I know I'm a fighter, but the question is who and what really is worth fighting? Right. Uno, dos, tres, kick it! Funky fresh, dressed to a fresh, ready to party. Money in your pocket, dying to move your body. To get inside, you paid the whole $10 scotch tape with the razor blade tape to your car. Leave the guns in the crack and the knives alone. MC lights on a microphone, bum rushing and crushing, snatching and taxing. I come to understand why brothers don't be matching. It's only one disco. They're closing more, you ain't guarding the door. So what you got a gun for? Do you rob the rich and get to the poor? Yo, daddy, yo, school them some more. Self-destruction, you're headed for self-destruction. 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 One of the things one of the girls mentioned that she discovered in this whole journey of finding her voice and studying MC Light is sometimes it's not so important to do everything that the boys get to do, especially when you get an opportunity to be as divine as the girls are. I think that kind of became their motto, something they walked with. There was pride in being able to say, yeah, I'm a girl. I don't want to do everything everybody else does. I want the freedom and the opportunity <coughs> to do what I do the way that I do it because no one else can. MC Light has been a great example of that, not only for the girls, but for me when I was a girl. She's a great example for us about warrior women. I think the girls had fun studying, studying her as a tool to learn their strategy to win in this war. Hey y'all, what's that song called? Mm, what no. song? What song? It's many songs. Cha cha cha. Oh! oh. I thought so. Ooh, girl. You, you can cha 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 to this Mardi Gras. I'm the dopest female that you heard thus far, and I do get better. The voice gets wetter. Nobody gets hurt as long as you let her do my thing with an '89 swing. The dopeness I write, I guarantee the life until the hip hop maniac, the uptown brainiac. I was going to try to do the third verse, but no, no, they, they won't let me. 
My background is actually as an actor. When I was around their age, I started in theater. I then became a playwright. When I started the organization and we worked together, we were just doing the work, listening to the music, but something magical happened. They discovered theater. And when they discovered theater, they didn't let go. We learned from MC Light the power of your voice when it comes to hip hop. She's a philanthropist, an MC, and an icon. And then we move forward and we learn that when you write the stories of your own experiences, or your mother's experience, or your grandmother's experience, or the lost experiences that maybe come from your imagination. Not only do you find a new freedom, you expand your audience and you expand your own history. With that, the girls had an opportunity to study and learn from one of my favorite playwrights, one of my favorite writers, Pearl Clegg. Born in Springfield, Massachusetts, she was raised in my hometown, Detroit, Michigan, so I was really excited. She also went to Howard University and graduated from Spelman College with a degree in playwriting. Clegg is amazing for her ability to write the stories and the narratives of black women through fiction, nonfiction, drama, and essay. Being nominated and winning over five Adelco Awards for her work, you may be familiar with her contributions to uh, literature from Babylon Sisters to maybe even what crazy looks like on an ordinary day. What looks like crazy on an ordinary day. <laughs> I think I'm kind of in the crazy part. <laughs> Nonetheless, the rich stories that Pearl Clegg has done diligence in telling have not only given us, given us insight in what life was like for black women of generations and generations, but it also has given us sort of kind of our own idea of what life can be like for the future. We looked at some of the plays that Clegg has written as a means of kind of figuring out how we would want to tell the story if we were telling the story. We looked at everything. We started with Flying West and talked about strategy and generation and what does it look like to keep a house together and what does it look like to fight when no one knows that you're actually fighting. We then got an opportunity to move forward and look at some of her literature and then we landed on, on Blues for an Alabama Sky and got to examine the roles of women both in entertainment and the relationship that a lot of women experience when it comes to fighting to get their voice heard in art and in music. Pearl Clegg has been an amazing example for us of what it looks like to fight this fight and to fight it through literature. She's the one of the women that the girls chose to speak her name, to lift her up, to thank her for her contributions as they continue to fight with art as their war. Pearl Clegg once said, it is my belief that conscious African-American students ought to be in a constant state of rage and in constant search of ways to channel that rage into freedom struggle. Discomfort is always a necessary part of enlightenment. Pearl Clegg, what looks like crazy on an ordinary day. The problem with knowing is that it takes out all of the possibilities of pretending. <coughs> Pearl Clegg. What looks like crazy on an ordinary day. He called the guys and told me that the audition was canceled. So when I got there, the place was empty. It was just me and him. So he says, they must be stuck in traffic or something, and then offers me a drink while we wait. And right then, just that quick, I felt it, the truth of it. My trying to play headliners, guy trying to play purse. The whole truth. Tony told me that he could look out for me, offer me some protection in these hard times. But he ain't want to sing it no more than you do. He just wanted to keep a color woman stashed up in Harlem so he can come by every now and then and rub her on the head for good luck. <laughs> Don't. No Negro woman should have anything. And so what? Do you even understand what I'm talking about? 
when I was at Tony's this week, in this afternoon, I saw the way he was looking at me, like he could see right through my clothes. And I know he was talking to Nick about me. I don't, I don't even have to imagine what he said. What he said. I've, I've heard, heard them talk, talk about women. women. I know what they say, but I wouldn't let myself think like that. I pushed that thought right on out of my mind because I know how to take care of myself. I'm not going to be one of them broke old women begging up 125th Street. So I drank with him and listened to him tell me how long he'd been wanting to get to know me better. And I watched him put his hand on my knee like I wouldn't notice. And I pretended not to. And I laughed just to keep some noise in our room. It was so quiet. Then I stood to pour myself another drink and I saw myself in the mirror. And I thought, what is that poor, crazy color woman laughing about? When I turned around, there was Tony waiting for an answer. So I gave it to him. Because we are free women, born of free women, back as far as time began, we celebrate your freedom. Because we are wise women, born of wise women who are born of wise women, we celebrate your wisdom. Because we are strong women, born of strong women, who are born of strong women, we celebrate your strength. Because we are magical women, born of magical women, who are born from magical women, we celebrate your magic. We are here to speak your names because you told us that the search is always for the truth and that when people show us who they are, we should believe them. We are here because you told us that the sisters Pete can continue to be our native tongue, no matter how many languages we learn as we move about the world and of the ever-evolving universe. We're the ones you conjured up, hoping we would have strength enough and discipline enough and talent enough and nerve enough to step into the, step into the light when it turned into our direction and just a smile a while. <laughs> we speak your names. We, we speak, speak your names. has been bold with the pen, daring to say what would save the lives of black women and girls even if it was unpopular. She once wrote a book-length essay about, called Mad at Miles, where she talks about how difficult it is to celebrate the genius of a man when he has an addiction to beating and abusing women, mainly black women. I wasn't going to be able to write about this piece at all. I had been avoiding it for about a month, trying to think of something else to say. Something funny. After all, we are gathered here to celebrate our creative geniuses, not talk about men beating women and her five-day domestic murders and all that sexish. That wasn't the reason I almost didn't do the piece, because I thought Miles Davis had put a hex on me. I thought that somehow he had found out that I was writing a piece suggesting that he is guilty of his self-confessed violent crimes against women such that we should break his albums, burn his tapes, and scratch up his CDs until he acknowledges and apologizes and agrees to rethink his position on the woman question. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? Breaking Miles Davis records. Just because of a few mistakes in his personal life. Next thing you know, I'll be fussing about two live crew and how they don't know the difference between rape and reciprocity. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The danger is that we go so long without asking the question that we've forgotten what we wanted. I can't stop thinking about it. I can't stop wondering what we would do if the violence was against black men instead of black women. Would we forgive the perpetrator so quickly and allow him back into our private time? So the question is, how can they hit us and still be our heroes? And the question is, how can they hit us and still be our husbands, our leaders, our lovers, our geniuses, our friends? And the answer is, they can't. Can they? Whew. 
very, very strong content, very, very complex content, but it speaks to the power of what happens when you put the story out there. After examining what the, monolo what the essay for Mad at Miles meant, we had a long conversation about what she was talking about. And the idea of Miles Davis that lived in the head of the Girls and Griot Girls was, oh yeah, the really famous jazz musician. And that was part of the story. But the other part of the story wasn't so easy to tell. But we found a powerful connection in telling that part of the story. I think that was the moment that we really clicked and really, really understood just how important it is to tell all of the stories and not just one story. Pearl Clegg became our example of what it looks like when a writer is bold enough and brave enough to tell all of the story, even if it makes them uncomfortable, even if it reveals some type of vulnerability, knowing that putting the story out there may potentially help or liberate someone else. So, since we're speaking the names, Pearl Clegg, for making your pen your sword, we speak your name. I have you in my possession. Your charm is your greatest weapon. You've caused me pain. I set fire to the rain and I watched it grow. Don't forget you reap what you sow. You are my best friend and my greatest foe. Keep me under a spell is what you do, but I can't spend the rest of my days possessed by you. I've put a spell on you because you're mine. Oh my, you better stop the things you do. I ain't lying, no, I ain't lying. You know I can't stand it, you're running around. You know better day day, and I can't stand it cause you bring me down. I've put a spell on you because you're mine. Oh, Miss Nina Simone, the high priestess of soul. You got to learn to lead the table when love ain't being served no more. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Michaela, you just, just, just joined us. Like, you haven't even been with us a full month. Do you remember what you've learned about Nina Simone? Yes. Okay, okay, let's see, let's, okay. So what do you remember about Nina Simone? Well, born Eunice Kathleen mm -hmm. Wayman in Trayon, North Carolina on February 21st, 1933. She studied music and classical piano in her early life. <laughs> <laughs> She went to, she, um, she studied music and classical piano in her early life. Mm -hmm. She graduated by Victorian of her high school class, and she studied classical music at, at Juilliard, New York, yes. Juilliard <laughs> in New York City, before applying to the prestigious Institute of Music in Philadelphia. With more than 40 original albums, it was more than her incredible voice that stirred lives and changed souls. It was her truth, her fearlessness, and her soul that said, I am proud to be young, gifted, and black. All right now, I'm scared of you. Go ahead, <laughs> Michaela. Well, I remember a Nina Simone quote, and this was a quote that we used to begin to write our own work. We listened to a library of Nina Simone, and I remember we all, there was a big gasp in the room when we heard her say, an artist's duty is to reflect the times. How could you be an artist and not reflect the times? And there was a big hush. And so we all started thinking about what does it mean to be an artist? How do we tell our story and reflect our lives and our times? 17-year-old singer and poet Angel Hill did the work. Using one of the Nina Simone classics misunderstood, she dove deeply into her own story to begin to think about who she was when the veil wasn't on. 
What was her story that she maybe hadn't told yet? I'd like to welcome to the stage, Angel Hill. Understood. She came to give me my insecurities wrapped with love, my hair just as it is, beautifully textured, my legs just as they are, purposely made for me. Wisdom that I've gained, things that I've learned, my artistic way of thinking, I tend to hold inside. The girl who momentarily wears confidence <laughs> because she fathoms dressing like she lived in the 70s, 80s, and 90s because she loved the music they made in those days better because it was real, slow, gentle, and hopeful in those moments she couldn't describe what she wanted or felt and found that there was a song, an artist, who seemingly wrote a song with her in mind. The girl who drowns in her thoughts for hours but still seems to conjure up some sort of brilliance in the mist, all while looking as if she is still alive. My skin, untouched, a pure soul that cries out so loud, so profound, you'll shiver uncontrollably at the slightest sound. Baby, you understand me now. It's sometimes you see that I'm mad. Don't you know no one alive can always be an angel? When everything goes wrong, you see some bad. But I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Oh, Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. You know, sometimes, baby, I'm so carefree with a joy that's hard to hide. And then again, sometimes it seems that all I have is worry. And then you're bound to see my other side. But I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Oh, Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. If I seem edgy, I want you to know I never mean to take it out on you. Life has its problems and I get more than my share. But that's one thing I never mean to do cause I love you. Oh, baby, I'm just human. Don't you know I have faults like anyone? Sometimes I find myself alone regretting some little foolish thing, some simple thing that I've done. But I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Oh, Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. <laughs> You are the black bird mistaken for a crow, so are the black dove. You are the beauty of black girl, grown woman, bloomed into legend. You are the bullets in mama's gun, the love that dripped down Jill's back, and the education of Lauren Hill. You are every black, brown, and yellow woman who said no. I will not be an object for your entertainment, but a tool for our enlightenment. You are the black rose that blooms once and never dies.
after it. Why you wanna fly, blackbird? You ain't ever gonna fly. No place big enough for holding all these tears. You're gonna cry. Cause your mama's name was lonely And your daddy's name was pain And they called you little sorrow Cause you'll never love again So why you wanna fly, blackbird? You ain't ever gonna fly You ain't got no one to hold you You ain't got no one to care If you'd only understand it Nobody wants you anywhere so why you wanna fly, blackbird? You ain't ever gonna fly. Nina Simone was an extraordinary artist. She told most of her stories through music, just like, for example, Strange Fruit, because it's a story about black people getting lynched. Southern trees bearing strange fruit, blood on the leaves. Blood at the root, black bodies swinging, oh, swinging in the southern breeze, strange fruit hanging. From the poplar tree, pastoral scene of the gallant south, the big bold and eyes, and the twisted mouth, scent of magnolia. So clean and fresh, then the sudden smell of burning flesh. Here is the fruits for the crows to pluck, for the rain to gather, for the wind to suck. For the sun to rot, for the leaves to drop, here is a strange and bitter cry.
it's never easy to explain that the slaughter is not new, that maybe just the form that it came in is new. It's never easy to explain that oppression is not new, but maybe the way you are being oppressed is new. Nina Simone becomes a great artist to study, to learn about all of the experiences prior to you that are still relevant today. But the beauty of Nina Simone was that there was a certain magic and joy, even amidst all of the pain. It was like we ended every session that we listened to, the soul, the wrenching music of Nina Simone, we ended it with one sentiment that we still loved being who we are and in our skin. That being a black girl, though, can be difficult. Nothing changes the fact that we were all feeling good about it. So I invite to the stage 14-year-old vocalist Autumn Mitchell to share with you just how it is to be a griot girl and feeling good. Flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I You know how I feel It's a new dawn, a new day, a new life for me And I'm feeling good Fish in the sea, you know how I feel I know how it feels to be black and girl, and to hope to see black and woman. And to be black and anything else cancels out by itself in this world. Sisters, I know what it feels like to be painted as the enemy and the victim. Protection is a law that is said but never given. Something spoken and written that doesn't apply to me. Who will protect us from the dangers that live under the same roof? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. If he beats me in front of my children and I have no proof, who do you believe then is telling the truth? What should I do when he takes my body away from me? I'm talking molestation, sexual abuse, rape specifically. 17-year-old mm. mm. body moved across state lines then arrested for sex trafficking, mm. serving time for being victimized. Who determines truth from lies? Who protects me? Being viewed as nothing more than hips, butt, breasts, and thighs, so many more God qualities I manifest. Yeah. Yeah. Soft, sweet, brown flesh. Sisters, I know what it feels like to be a threat, degraded and treated with no respect when you are born woman, girl, and black, seem like there's a permanent target on our backs. Mm -hmm. They try to tell us we are less than them. Mm -hmm. But this world is our battlefield. It is. Mm -hmm. Our voices are our greatest shield. 
this war we were signed up to simply for existing. But I'm here to remind you, the world is yours. No longer will we be neglected or ignored and pushed to the side, black women of all colors, shapes, and sizes. Yes, yes. No longer will they deprive us of our pride, because we are black and women and everything in between. You better mm -hmm. tell it. We were born with the power to take back what was ours in the beginning. Sisters, I know what it feels like to be a warrior woman. Yes,
what do they call me? Sweet thing. What do they call me? My name is PJ. <laughs> don't, 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 don't. Who will speak for the sisters who have been silenced by fear, by pain, or worse, by death? When you speak their names, you give them new life. You vow to never forget them. Who will speak for the sisters who have been bold, beautiful, and brilliant in their, con in their contribution to art, music, and drama, and more? Well, it looks like we answered the question. I guess we speak their yeah, names. names. We speak their names. names. Thank you so much for sitting and participating and being part of the work. Ladies, let's bow. I'm not crossing my legs, Taylor. <laughs>